All right, Rob, speaking of the Boston Celtics, their top player, Jason Tatum, I think there's a ton on the line for Jason Tatum, Rob. I think if he wins, he will never have to again answer the question of, or at least even have it talked about him in this regard, of can he be the best player on a championship team? Because will he will have won a championship, and he's only twenty six, Rob. And he would if he wins a championship at twenty six, he will have done so in terms of age, winning a title before LeBron, before Jordan, before Elijah Wan, before Shaq. Only a handful of stars have won at a younger age than what Jason Tatum would be. You know, Larry Bird won it at 24. That team did have some older Hall of Famers on it. Tiny Archibald, um, you know, and then Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish, but they were young. Magic was 20, but, I mean, he he went to a team with the MVP. No, 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 right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying as far as being the best player. Yeah, Magic was 20, and Kobe was 21, and obviously he had Shaq. So they were younger, but as far as kind of like leading your team, being that guy – this would uh, be a huge accomplishment for Jason Tatum and silence a lot of doubters about him, Rob. Also, um, I think, Rob, like this year he did not finish in the top five MVP, uh, you know, recipient, voter, vote recipients. Uh, I voted for him. I had him fourth on my ballot, but he didn't finish top five overall. Even though his team had the best record in the league, it says, by it says a lot. It says yeah, a lot, right? It does. I mean, we weren't saying he had to win it, but he wasn't even in the top five. No, that that says a lot to have that kind of a record, Chris. Uh, not not get any kind of support, but we know uh, his uh, his crunch time, prime time, you know, stats are not good, right? And that's a big issue, and that hurts. And obviously, uh, those I think those are the things that um, make people leery, and we've seen them things not work out for his team. Well, I was going to ask you that because I, to to add insult to injury, Rob, uh, Josh Hart, who plays for the Knicks and and had a great series or great playoff run this year, uh, he was on a podcast last week talking about who was who were the most impactful players on the Celtics and here's what he said. So top five then that's left. You got Tatum. Tatum there. Kyrie. Luca. Anthony Ant. Edwards. Yeah. Ant. Ant. Luca. Ant. Luca. I love Ant. Ant. Luca. Kyrie. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Luca, Kyrie, two Kyrie's three. up there. But I might put over this like impactful. I might put Derek White more impactful than JT. Look at oh, every wow. main play in the last <laughs> six minutes of the fourth to overtime. Every big play he made. He's probably one of the most impactful players because he does just everything on the court and does everything at a very high level. There you go, Chris. You, you, that's what you I, responded, yeah. But that's what I was talking about. And that's those are the crunch time numbers that everybody knows. Even in the game that they won against the Pacers, Chris, if you remember, he had a bad fourth quarter. He had a bad fourth quarter. Huge and then he, overtime. Oh, yeah. Huge overtime. But, in OT. but yeah. if it wasn't for that Jalen Brown three-pointer, Chris, that, that might not even happen. Right. Because right. he had a bad fourth quarter. And, and I think that's why people discount Jason Tatum despite all the numbers and everything, the wins and what his team has been able to do. Do you think it's justified? Like, it's fair? I do. Like he's I do think that there's a degree. Be? Yeah, because... He's had those moments and situations, and sometimes Chris, we talk about it all the time. It doesn't. You, you can't. You don't do it until you do it. Like like there's a moment where you make that big shot and you win that big game or that championship. We heard it, and Jason Tatum shouldn't feel bad. Michael Jordan's a great player, but he don't make nobody better. They right. don't win. Blah 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 right. blah blah. We Magic heard it, Larry. Yep. Chris. Anybody who thinks that at Michael Jordan was crowned day one and everybody thought he was the cat's meow and the new hotness and all that, you weren't around. Right. 
I mean, he, he was, was criticized. He was wildly popular because he the sneakers took off. They had to come fly oh, right. with the videos and you know all that. But you're right, right? The gatekeep. I would say the gatekeepers of the game. The writers, the media, the people that, you know, form the opinions, they were like, yo, it'd be nice if he win a little bit, you know? I mean, y'all talking about Michael Jordan. We talking about Magic and Larry, even Isaiah. And so this is not unique to Jason Tatum. But I do think, Rob, it is a little bit overboard. This guy is 26 years old, been to five Eastern Conference Finals as the best player, and been a three-time All-NBA player. Now he's playing in his second NBA Finals. And again, he didn't go to a team with a great big man or a superstar front court player that he could follow and learn from. He's been the guy. Now, Kyrie obviously was the best player on the team for a little while, but Kyrie wasn't there but two years. And uh, Jason Tatum's kind of had to lead this team as a young guy who might not be ready to lead. Um, And he's had them, you know, deep in the playoffs every single year pretty much. And, Rob, last – and I've said this before, but it bears repeating. Last series – Jason Tatum did what Larry Bird, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, John Havlicek, Kevin McHale, uh, Bill Russell. He did what Sam Jones, none of them did, which was average 30, 10, and five assists or more. He actually averaged six in an Eastern Conference final. And yet he still is kind of viewed as, eh, I'm not sure. I, Rob, I think, and, and you, the points you made are legit, you know, clutch play or lack thereof and all that. But I'm going to throw a little theory at you. I think some of it is that we've seen kind of players similar to Jason Tatum before who are actually better. I, he's not exactly like these guys, but, you know, the swing man, the 6'6", six, six, the 6'8", six, swing man, nice handle, go off the dribble, can shoot. That was Michael and Kobe, but they were better. Like, we've seen versions of Jason Tatum and actually superior versions. Look at the guys that get most of the shine right now. They're unique. Luka threatens to average a triple-double every year. Jokic, the first ever point center in NBA history. Uh, uh, Giannis, a seven-foot super freak athlete. Uh, Anthony Edwards, we've seen, you know, spectacular players like him before, but still, when they're spectacular like that, it don't matter if you've seen them before. This dude's just jumping off a trampoline when he dunks over people. And so I think that also, Rob, because Anthony Edwards, and I get it, he's a lot younger. But he hasn't accomplished nearly as much as Jason Tatum. You know, so I, I just think some of that also, Rob, plays into it as to why Tatum really doesn't, to me, get the respect he kind of deserves. Yeah, I, I think that I think you're right. And I think that no one is going to Chris – officially push him over the threshold until he's able to win. No doubt. And, and until he's able to, to, to win in a big spot and, and, and make some big shots and people will say, man, he finally crossed over and he's that guy. But we talked about it. You could get that rep until you, you, know, until you do it. So it's, it's, is he a great player? Yes. But he's always going to be a notch below Because now if he had strong numbers in crunch time, Chris, and they still didn't win, people would look at him differently. It's because these aren't feelings, they're facts. I'm I'm just saying, the crunch crunch time time. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I think that hurts. You could point to that and say these numbers aren't good when it matters. He has bad fourth quarters. And he's had some huge games. You know, remember when was it game six 
against uh, Milwaukee. He had 46, something like that. You know, they went back. They went to Milwaukee a few years ago and were down 3-2, and he was phenomenal, 40-something points. Like, he's he has had – it's all it's somewhat, Robin. I, I don't want to put him in this class because that wouldn't be fair because obviously we've seen – like, Harden's resume is written, right? Tatum's still building his, so I don't want to put him on the Harden level. But – it's kind of like that, Robin, that he's had huge big games, but then he's had some really poor performances in big games too or at, at crunch time moments. And so, you know, that that's some of it too. But uh, you're right. I mean, he, he won't get out of this until he wins. And look, you said it about Jordan. Rob Dirk, we talked about Dirk earlier, but you remember, Rob, when they won, they had Miami beat no six. They were oh, up two zero. Yep. They were darn near up three zero because I remember they were up thirteen with like six minutes left or something like that. I was covering that series. You were too, I think. Were you yeah. covering that series? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And remember game three, Gary Payton helped you know Miami come back with a nice run, and they won game three, and then they won the rest of the series. They won in six, um, and then Rob Dirk was eliminated in the first round of the playoffs three of the next four years. One of them, as you remember, his MVP year, which was the crazy embarrassment when they lost to the eight-seeded Golden State Warriors. And so Dirk, when he got to those finals in 2011 against Miami, I mean, it was he was kind of viewed like this, like, man, this dude can't get over the hump. This dude's not going to get it done. And, and obviously he changed that. And so that's what Jason Tatum can do. And and look, it's a compliment to him, right? I mean, when people expect a lot from you and hold you accountable and criticize you when you fall short, that says that they respect your game and that they expect a lot from you. But he does have an opportunity. And if they lose, Rob, he um, it's going to be interesting what happens in Boston. I don't know if they run it back. I I, probably, but. They might, you know, they might listen to offers for for Jalen Brown or maybe even Jason Tatum. Who knows? But uh, yeah, they might have it, to it do something, Chris. Yeah, because uh, you'll look at it and say maybe it's not going to happen for us. Right, right. 